This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Hello, I'm Brandon House for the Jamie Glazov Gang. Tonight, I want to speak to you on the revolution that's been occurring in America in earnest since 1933. Most Americans don't realize that there has been a revolution going on in America going back to 1933, but there has been. Let me explain. In 1923, there was a Marxist institute that was formed in Germany. We call it the Frankfurt School, but they openly embraced Marxism. When Hitler came to power in 1933, many of them decided it was time to get out of Germany. And so they came to America at the invitation of John Dewey. John Dewey, the father of our progressive educational system in America. John Dewey, who signed the Humanist Manifesto, helped start the Socialist Society. John Dewey, who went to Russia in the 1920s to study the Karl Marx way of education and then came back to America to implement that here. That John Dewey decided to bring the Frankfurt School to our nation, America, in 1933. And to drop them down at leading institutions such as Brandeis, Berkeley, Princeton, and other places. And the faculty of the Frankfurt School, who were prolific authors and writers, wrote openly that their goal was to gain control of two power centers in America for their revolution. If they could gain control of these two power centers, they believed they could have a long march through the institutions, destroy the existing morality of America, and thus have a revolution at America. And so they went after education and media. Education and media. In fact, one of the most famous faculty members of the Frankfurt School is a man by the name of Herbert Arcuza. He coined the phrase, make love, not war. And he declared, quote, one can rightfully speak of a cultural revolution since the protest is directed toward the whole cultural establishment, including the morality of existing society. There is one thing we can say with complete assurance. The traditional idea of revolution and the traditional strategy of revolution has ended. These ideas are old-fashioned. What we must undertake is a type of diffuse and dif dispersed disintegration of the system." End quote. What's he saying? Go after the morality of the nation. Destroy their Judeo-Christian worldview, ethics, and morality, and you'll have chaos. Ideas have consequences. Your worldview matters. In other words, they understood that your worldview is the foundation of your values, your values is the foundation of your conduct. If they could change their worldview away from a Judeo-Christian ethic and a Judeo-Christian worldview foundation, and all that springs from that in the area of law, science, economics, history, and family, they could begin to change their values. If they could change their values away from a Judeo-Christian ethic system, they could redefine things like marriage. They could redefine masculinity and femininity. In fact, declare that there is no such thing as gender. Is that happening today? Indeed it is. Did you know that the Frankfurt School openly stated that their goal was to do away with masculinity and femininity and go to just a general humanness, a fluidness in genders? Is that happening today? Indeed it is. But did you know that was what they brought to America in their writings in 1933? Well, they also said if they could destroy the American male, they could have a revolution in America much quicker because they understood that the family in America was the incubator for maintaining a constitutional republic. And if they could destroy the American male by destroying marriage and respect for marriage and respect for a father who provides for his family and cares for his family, they'd be well on their way to destroying that incubator that keeps proliferating a constitutional republic. So they said that they wanted to do away with a patriarchal society and replace it with a matriarchal society. And so they promoted feminism, not equal rights for women, but a denigration of marriage, family, men. That's what feminism is. It's a denigration of fathers. It's a denigration of family. And so they did just that. They had a war on the American male. And we went from being a patriarchal society to a matriarchal society to where now today, what do you have? You have the breakup of the family. You have easy divorce. Many people don't even bother to get married. And when you have that kind of worldview change and values, you have consequences. What do we have today? Many, many children born outside of the confines of marriage. 
In fact, you have women having children with multiple men. Well, when this happens, you have to deal with the crisis as a people, right? I mean, after all, who now is going to pay for the clothes and the food and the housing of these many children that this lady has had with many different men? Well, the American people look at that and they say, well, the children should not suffer the consequences. And the change agents inside our government say, correct. So we'll have a progressive income tax system, use that to build a welfare state, and we will take care of those children. You see how that revolution occurred? By not putting people in a position of putting guns in their face or using bullets, that's the old way of revolution. Remember, Herbert Marcuse said that's the old way of revolution. The new way is a diffused and dispersed disintegration of the system. Attack the existing morality in all areas of life. And when you do this, you have consequences. Then when you have the chaos and consequences, you turn to the American people and you say, we, the government, can fix it, but we need more of your money. We need to redistribute the wealth. And the American people say, I don't really care for this. I don't really like this idea, but it's for the children. And you keep doing this on down the line in every area of life until now the American people have willingly conceded to a form of socialism, redistribution of wealth. But at first, they had to have a culture war, cultural Marxism, cultural Marxism. And those who don't go along, well, they're going to be censored. They're going to be deplatformed and blocked and banned and maybe eventually have hate crime laws brought against them. In fact, it was Herbert Marcuse in his paper in 1965 entitled Repressive Tolerance who declared, quote, liberating tolerance then would mean intolerance against movements from the right and toleration of movements from the left. As to the scope of this tolerance and intolerance, it would extend to the stage of action as well of, as of discussion and propaganda, of deed as well as of word. He went on to state that what they wanted to do was to take away the right of freedom of speech and freedom of assembly from those who do not agree with the expansion of the welfare state or those who do not agree with their cultural Marxism. Is that happening today? A censorship of conservatives? A blacklisting? A blocking? A shadow banning? A deplatforming? Well, indeed it is. And this was what the Frankfurt School set out to do so they could have a cultural revolution in America. They also stated that they must create a coalition of victims, a coalition of victims. They needed to create offenses where no offenses existed and then exploit those offenses and say, who is the oppressor? Those who embrace conservative ideas, Christianity, and capitalism. In fact, the Frankfurt School openly stated that the source of all suffering and oppression was Christianity and capitalism. Christianity and capitalism. But to do this, they had to create victims. And so they began to use the feminist movement and the sexual liberation movement and immigration and minorities to say, look at all the things uh, that are going wrong in your life. Look at all the, the ways you're being mistreated. And who's mistreating you? Those Christians, those capitalists, those conservatives. So what they did was they created a victim coalition. They created offenses that did really not exist in many ways. And they exploited this propaganda through education and media to say that the source of all suffering and oppression is Christianity and capitalism. And that's where we are today. Today, the American male, the white Christian conservative American capitalist male, there is a war on him. And fo folks, this goes all the way back to 1933 when the Frankfurt School came to America. One of the people they followed was Karl Marx, who said, my object in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. Indeed, my friends, they have dethroned God in the hearts of many Americans through our educational system and media. Because you see, they understood our constitutional republic was based on the laws of the divine. William Blackstone, the leading scholar for the founding fathers, openly stated that a constitutional republic is this, Whatever the divine has ruled on, we don't rule against. So if they could dethrone God in the hearts and minds of Americans through our educational system, they could destroy absolute truth. They could destroy the existing morality of the culture. They could thus change their worldview, change their values, and have a crisis. And then the government steps in with uh, welfare state system programs to carry out cultural Marxism that's now flipped to being straight socialism, the redistribution of wealth. And my friends, this is how we've had a revolution largely in America, and most people are not even aware of the Frankfurt School. I've been writing about this for nearly 20 years. If you want more information on it, I have a brand new book called Marxianity, Marxianity, and a new movie called Sabotage. You'll find it 
the book and the movie at sabotagethemovie.com, sabotagethemovie.com. Thank you, Jamie Glazoff, for letting me be a part of the Glazoff gang. I'm Brandon House. Take care.